Welcome to this next video in the playlist on group theory. This is going to be a short video just to introduce you to the concept of a simple group. Okay, so let's begin with the definition. Okay, so a group capital G is called simple if it obeys a certain criterion. Now you can have finite simple groups and infinite simple groups because both finite groups and infinite groups can obey this criterion that uh, it gives you the title of being simple. Okay, so what is this criterion? So it's very simple. The criterion for being a simple group is that the only normal subgroups that you can contain are the trivial subgroup and the improper subgroup. So the only normal subgroups are uh, the trivial subgroup, which I'll denote 1 here, and the improper subgroup, which of course I'll denote capital G here. And that's it. That's the criterion for being a simple group. Now, of course, loads of groups will not obey this. Loads of groups will have other subgroups that are normal, that are not the trivial or improper subgroup, okay, and therefore will not be simple groups. But this is the criterion that you need to obey in order to be called a simple group. And it needs to be the case that you only have two normal subgroups, and they are these two stupid subgroups, the trivial subgroup that just contains the identity element, and the improper subgroup which contains anything. Uh, or rather everything in the group. Okay, so firstly let me just remind you what it means to be a normal subgroup. So a normal subgroup is a special type of subgroup. So we usually refer to normal subgroups by the letter capital N. So capital N will be a normal subgroup of G if uh, it's a subgroup firstly, so it has to be a subgroup, uh, and it also obeys the criterion that it is stable under conjugation by any element of the group. If for all little g is an element of the group capital G, it must be the case that if you conjugate the normal subgroup by g, by which I mean go through every single element of this normal subgroup and conjugate every last one by g, collect all of the answers together, that subset that's the conjugate of this normal subgroup, and I'm saying that it must be equal to the normal subgroup back again. So whenever you conjugate the normal subgroup by any element of the group, you must get the normal subgroup back again. Now that does not mean that every element of the normal subgroup, when conjugated by any element of the group, has to give itself back again. It means that this set has to equal this set. It doesn't mean that every single element in that set is going to be fixed by conjugation by any element of the group. Okay, it just says that the sets are equal to one another. It might be the case that lots of the elements in here are actually changed by conjugation by G, uh, but overall uh, the sets end up being the same, and that's what you need uh, to be true in order for this subgroup to be called a normal subgroup. Okay, so lots of subgroups don't obey that and therefore aren't normal subgroups. Okay, right. So in order to be a simple group then, it needs to be true that the only normal subgroups in that um, group are the trivial subgroup and the entire group, which will always be normal subgroups. If you conjugate these by any element of the group, uh, you will always end up with that uh, same subgroup back again. Okay, so firstly, let me give you an example of an entire family of finite simple groups. So it's the trivial example, uh, but it's the good example to start with. Okay, so a massive great family then of finite simple groups are the cyclic groups on sets of prime elements, uh, of, on sets of a prime number of elements, so CP groups. Okay, also called the ZP groups, where P is some prime, i.e. some prime natural number, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, etc. Any of those prime natural numbers. Okay, so these are these uh, groups that contain all of the cyclic permutations of these sets of prime elements. Okay, so C2 would be the group that contains both of the cyclic set permutations of the set of two elements. C19 would be the group that contains all of the 19 uh, cyclic set permutations of a set of 19 elements. Okay, now I claim that all of these are going to be finite simple groups. Well, they're certainly all finite groups, but why are they also simple groups? Well, these actually are then an even more incredible criterion than just the simple criterion. These actually obey the property that the only subgroups full stop are the trivial subgroup and the improper subgroup. And the reason for that is that the order 
of these uh, cyclic groups on the set of prime of a prime number of elements uh, is equal to that prime. So I'll just write that down. So the order of CP is going to be equal to this prime P. Now the Grange's theorem says that any subgroup must have an order that divides the order of the group. I would have to have an order that divides this prime natural number and there are only two options, one and the prime natural number itself. This is the subgroup of size one, this is the subgroup of size p. Okay, so those are the only two subgroups of this cyclic group on the set of p elements. Okay, uh, so indeed for these cyclic groups on sets of a prime number of elements, you only have two subgroups, full stop, and therefore truly the only normal subgroups uh, are going to be the trivial subgroup and the improper subgroup because those are the only subgroups. Okay, so it's certainly going to be true that these groups are simple. Okay, so these make up a massive great family of finite simple groups. Okay, so uh, just to end this video then, what I want to tell you about is something called the Holder Program. Okay, so the Holder Program was a great uh, program in mathematics, a great triumph of 20th century mathematics. Okay, was th um, was solving part one of the Holder Program. Okay, so the Holder Program was a great objective in mathematics, a great sort of aim for mathematicians in finite group theory to aim towards. And it had two uh, great objectives. So I'll just firstly highlight this, get my priorities right, and then I'll write out the uh, objectives of the Holder Program. So there were two objectives. Objective number one was to classify all finite simple groups. Okay, so we wanted to uh, get lists of all of the families of finite simple groups. That was the hope that we'd be able to find a great big list of all of the finite simple groups. Now, uh, part two of the Holder Program was then to actually classify all finite groups, uh, or at least that's an uh, easy way of putting what part two of the Holder Program was. Now, what relation does part one and part two have to each other? Well, in a future video in this place on group theory that I haven't made yet, but hopefully will be made by the time you're watching this video, uh, I will explain something called composition series and the fact that all finite groups can be thought of as being made up by finite simple groups. So finite simple groups, if you like, are the building blocks for finite groups. Of course, I will make that precise in future videos. Okay, the future video which will be entitled composition series in the playlist on group theory. Okay, um, so the hope was that if we could classify all finite simple groups, we'd be able to classify all finite groups because after all, all we have to work out is how many different ways are there to build or rather put together the building blocks to make other groups basically. Okay, now part one has been successfully completed. I believe this was completed in the 1990s. Okay, so it's been completed for 20 something years. Okay, so it's done. Mathematicians did it. God only knows how, but they did it. And this is the result of it. They found that there were 18 families of finite simple groups. One of the families we have listed here, the family of all cyclic uh, groups on sets of prime number of elements. Okay, that's one of these 18 families of finite simple groups. Um, then there are 26 what are known as sporadic finite simple groups and these are finite simple groups that are not in any of the 18 families. Okay, so there are 18 families which contain loads of finite simple groups that are all related to each other like all the ones here that can be listed as just one category. Um, and then there are 26 that have to be listed one by one separately because they're just on their own and these are called the sporadic finite simple groups. Okay, and that list then completely characterizes all finite simple groups. Now it is completely beyond my capacity to explain to you all of the 18 families of finite simple groups and exactly how, uh, oh, and the 26 sporadic finite simple groups and to explain how mathematicians concluded that uh, those were the only ones. I don't know how they did that. I believe it took a huge number of people working together and they all pieced their little discoveries together and managed to conclude that this was true and that they had completed the characterization of finite simple groups. 
So I'm just taking it on faith that this is true, and I'm afraid you will just have to do that as well, unless you're planning to do a PhD in finite group theory. Okay, but that is the result of part one of the Holder program, and it is done. We have characterised all finite simple groups. Part two remains an open problem, characterising all finite groups. We haven't yet completed that. We haven't worked out how... Uh, we haven't characterised all of the different ways that you can actually put the blocks together and build a finite group. Okay, so although we now know about all of the building blocks, we know about all of the finite simple groups, we don't yet know, we haven't yet characterised fully all of the different ways of piecing them together to actually get finite groups. So part two is still being worked on. Okay, so with that, uh, we will end this introductory video on simple groups.